Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So today I want to have a look at this little beastie, of the T100LT. This is the Russian Tier 10 light tank. Think about this tank is it's causing a bit of a stir, if I'm being honest. And why is that? Well, we'll get into that in a moment. But, I mean, it's a great addition to the tech tree. It's, it's a Russian light and, you know, it's a nice little tank. Those of you who watch tournaments or follow the tournaments will have seen that, especially on the EU server, player, well, teams, clans, some clans, are rolling out in a lot of these things and realistically dominating the battle. But why is that? I mean, after all, it's a bit of a little light tank. And the light tank shouldn't be, ex you know, exerting a massive dominance in the game as such. Not really. But this one is somewhat different. Now, when it first came out, or when it first was about to come out and hit, everybody was up in arms over its spotting mechanics. Now, the spotting mechanics of this tank is, well, pretty, pretty cool. Basically, if you shoot another tank and you don't even penetrate, then you'll keep that tank lit up for longer than you normally would. Now that in itself caused a lot of concern for people, but in the grand scheme of things, the maps that we have in Blitz aren't exactly massive, so the spotting mechanic that this tank brought into it didn't end up being its you know major dominant feature. So what was it? Well, let's have a compare of some of the other lights in the tier. Now, as you can see here, we have got the T100, the Vickers Light, the Batchat, and the Sheridan. These are all the tier 10 lights. And straight off the bat, you can see that the T100 Howty has by far, over and above the other lights in, in the tier, massive DPM. And it really does have huge DPM. 3,406. Okay, the Vickers comes close with 3,238, but the Batchat and the Sheridan are way down in the 2000s. Penetration, wow, well, the penetration is the penetration. It's the same across the board, to an extent with the Sheridan just losing a bit with the 230. The Alpha damage, well, again, the Alpha damage isn't that great. I mean, it's the same as the Batchat, but the Batchat is a reloader, so you have to consider that. The Sheridan by far has the best as the best sort of um, alpha damage but don't get miss you know don't get confused or misled by some of these figures because when we start looking at the reload times and the rates of fire this is where this little tank becomes well a concern the rate of fire on this thing is, is close to 11 rounds a minute now compare that to the nine rounds for the Vickers, the nine rounds to the Batchat, and the and the four and a half rounds for the Sheridan. The reload time is less than five and a half seconds. I mean, that is a second quicker than the Vickers, and massive seconds compared to the Batchat and the Sheridan. But the Batchat, as I said, is an auto loader, and the Sheridan has very high alpha. Caliber, well, how the caliber, not the best. Shower velocity, not the best. Aim time also is not the best, but it's you know, these are little parameters that you sort of look at. But when you start coming down, look at the speed on this thing. This thing is absolutely massively, really quick. It's massively quick. I mean, it's almost 70 kilometers going forwards and 25 going backwards. That is hands down faster than any other light in the tier. I mean, a lot of people like to talk about the engine power, power to weight ratios and all that sort of stuff. But, but, then look at its camo profile. It has 35% while it's still moving. Now, that's, that's huge. After it shoots, it still has a better camo profile than any other of the lights. Then we come right down. Look at that turret armor. Two 210. 210 turret armor for a light tank. I mean, that is huge. Okay, it doesn't have, you know, massive hull armor if you look at it compared to the Vickers. But the armor on this thing, not only is it 
big, I mean 210 is a lot, but it's also really trolly. So is it any surprise that this tank is wiping the floor, stats wise, with all the other lights? And you can see here, I mean, in the Hall of Fame, I mean, KY on um, the North American server has knocked out 10K in this thing. 10K! I mean, the closest we've got is 9.2K on EU. That's Loro Way, by the way. <laughs> One of my clan members. Well done, Loro. And 9.6 on the back chat. I mean, this tank is huge. Oh, by the way, there's Tastin Killer, another one of my friends. He's in, he's number three on the list for for the LT. So, unless you're living under a, a stone, this tank is on paper, on paper, pretty, pretty strong. In fact, some would argue, and I am one of those, to an extent, and I'll get to that in a minute, some would argue it's far too strong. Now, I'm not a great lights player, okay, I, 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 for various reasons. And I tried to explain those reasons yesterday in a in FB4202 video. Firstly, I don't have massively great ping. I mean, I generally play on the EU server where my ping is normally between anywhere between 120 and 180, sometimes 200. That, that doesn't allow me to play lights as effectively because there's quite a delay between me inputting the data and then that reaction going through all the servers um, you know, coming out at the other end in the game. So ping is not, a, is not on my side. The other thing that's totally against me is I'm, I'm getting quite old. I mean, I'm, I've, I'm past 50 now. Um, my eyesight is on the way out. I'm wearing glasses because I need to because I'm very long-sighted as age creeps upon me. And a lifetime of heading my head in a book finally gets the grips with my eyes. So my reaction times as a 50 plus guy with failing eyesight are not as good as like a 17 year old who has got great eyesight. So playing lights for me is not the easiest of tanks. Nevertheless, I still like rolling out in certain tanks. Here I am on Fort Despair in my little T100 LT, which I'll be openly honest with you is not my best tank um, for the reasons I've just said I'm just not a great lights player now I generally don't play supremacy I, I generally play just regular battles encounter and what I've done here on Fort Despair I'm expecting them to come around so I'm getting into a spotted position unfortunately nobody comes around so I've got to try and get into a better position now one of the things about this LT100 isn't just that it's got trolley armor it's not just that it's got insane DPM for a light tank. It's also incredibly squat. It's very, very small to the ground. Think along the lines of the cockroach, you know, another tank that's really squat, the low profile. That actually makes a big difference because the low profile of this tank, in some instances, if you start sort of side hugging tanks, they can't get their gun down. But the thing about this tank is its mobility and its gun. Now, we saw there that the aim time is pretty sort of low for a tier 10 light compared to the others. Doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. What matters with this tank is mobility, trolley armor, and a five and a half second reload. Because that five and a half second reload is really, really quick. I mean, you're looking at tier 10 here and you're knocking out close to 4K. DPM that is pretty big when you think about it and here I'm going to show you why its mobility and low profile is absolutely disastrous for big heavy tanks I mean look at this there's no way that Kranwagen is going to be able to get his gun down on me unless I, I, I move out to him but I can easily circle circle to death him easily and my penetration is good enough to do that and this is the thing about this tank. This tank can really, really pile on the pain. And if you're a good player in lights, then it's no surprise that you are going to dominate the battlefield in this thing. Wargaming maybe have realized this, and they've already announced that in update 9.1, they are going to be looking at nerfing this little 
tank because it sorely deserves a nerf. It really does. I mean, it is just too powerful. Would I say it's OP? Oh, I hate saying that tanks are OP or tanks are broken, but I would say with this one, it's just too strong. It, it is by far too strong because whilst I'm not going to set the world on fire in this game, and this is only going to be like a third class, I think, I'm still able to dominate the battlefield. I'm still able to knock out three and a half thousand damage. I'm still able to knock out tanks and take on big guns like you saw there with the object and the hurry. I'm still able to get around, that's a second class, I'm still able to get around the battlefield quite nicely without too many problems. I mean, I didn't lo leave that battle with like next to no hit points. I did lose a few, but not many. And as you can see, you know, I, I've done better than the Fosh, the Progetto, the Yo, the Waffle, the Yag Tiger, and the Super Conk. Now, when that happens, you have to scratch your head. And you have to say, hmm, is this tank too strong? Okay, erroneously I said close to 4K. I meant actually close to 3.5K in DPM, but that's still obscene when you think about it. This is another game on Fort Despair. This one is not me, because um, this is the supremacy game. This is Leuton from uh, the, the Clan First Alliance, who again is rolling out on Fort Despair. Now, he's a much better player than me, better win rate. In fact, he's a pro player in a pro team. But I'm in a pro team, but I, I don't play Clan Wars at pro level. And he's going to do pretty much what I was doing in, in the game I had. He's going to sit around, he's going to get those spots, then he's just going to farm this Progetto. This Progetto really is on the back foot. Why? Because it's going to find it difficult to pen that turret what with its massive armor and its very low profile. He, he does get a shot there mainly because Leuton over peaks a little bit but you know he's already done a thousand damage and he's whittling down in effectively farming this Progetto. This Progetto doesn't really have an open house chance unless he tries to rush him but the fact of the matter is he's got a five and a half second, well he's got a five second reload. I mean Five second reload. I mean, that, that's just madness, to be perfectly honest with you. Now he's going to push onto the 50 TP. Okay, it's a tier 9. But again, the penetration is okay for this tank. Its low profile is nice, but look at the mobility on it. And look at the DPM. This makes the tank realistically obscene. And if you are a player who is a super duper Umicum, which Loyton is, then you are able to absolutely pummel your enemy into submission. And there's not much they can do about it. And look at, I mean, what a troll bounce that was. But what do you expect? I mean, the armor on this thing is firstly trolly, and secondly, on that turret, a 200 plus. <laughs> I mean, what on earth were they thinking? Now, the irony is, I actually tested this tank and during the test, you know, we said, oh, this needs to change and that needs to change. And they did tinker with it. Nobody realized, to be perfectly honest with you, that it was going to be so powerful and so dominant. And at the moment, as I said earlier, Clan Wars is a very heavy meta dominated part of the game. Now, a lot of you won't play Clan Wars. I get that. I understand that. But Clan Wars is like an indication of what tanks are sort of, not broken, but borderline and very strong. And it goes to show you the sort of things that you can do in these tanks. It's the showcase of the tanks. And when, you know, top pro clans, in fact, you know, the clan that won the spring season for EU, BPS, when they roll out with six of these things, in the championship on the last day in the grand final in a heavy meta so-called heavy meta dominated clan wars environment and they go ahead and win it questions need to be asked about the tank because that just goes to show how dominant and how strong this thing is and serious questions need to be asked because you know if you've got Look, if anybody watches Clan Wars recently, it's been IS-7, 60 TPs. That, that's realistically what it's been. Now, we're seeing this thing bum-rushing the IS-7s and 60 TPs en masse, like, you know, like an army of ants. 
all with their low profile, all with their shocking DPM, all with their trolley armor, and absolutely decimating the, the, the heavy meta. And that then transcribes into the game, because if you are a good player, and you do have, you know, that ability to play light really well, then this thing, this tank, you should be playing it. And you should be spamming it until your heart's content. And because, you know, it's going to get nerfed, guys. And it's not going to be the same tank. And at this moment in time, with its strength and its dominance, you really need to spam it as much as possible. Because, you know, you're just going to get your damage up and you're going to get your win rate up. And you're probably going to, you know, you're probably going to have a lot more fun at this moment in time. And um, this LT... T100, this T100 LT at the moment, it's not a reminder of the days when we had, a, you know, um, ATGMs on the Sheridan. It's, it's not that. I mean, that was a completely different parameter because that tank was dominant if you were able to use the missiles because it didn't need to sort of break cover to shoot. This tank, however, is completely different because you do have to break cover, but the mobility, the DPM, the armor, all make it obscene i think now as i said i'm not the, i'm not one to normally claim that tanks are broken or op and i would argue that at this moment in time this tank is borderline broken because when a tank dominates so much you have to ask those questions as i said though i'm i you know I'm not a fantastic liked player. I, I'm, I'm certainly not a good player in the LT, in the T100 LT. I enjoy it. I try to get better at it, but I'm certainly not a great player. I'm okay. I'm average, as I keep telling everybody. But when you have games like this, and you earn this many credits, and you do that much, then questions need to be asked. So get it while you can, guys, because in a couple of months, it ain't going to be the same tank. Anyway, I've been Fujit. By all means, comment and everything below, because I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.